Sometime in the early summer of 2010, I was driving home from work on a particular route I was very accustomed to. Not much ever changed in my small town, and if something ever did, the residents surely knew about it. That said, you can imagine my surprise and disbelief that late fog infested summer night when there off to the right of that old country road, just on the other side of that fog set, an outdated but classy looking diner I have never seen in the town before. I pulled into the pothole infested parking lot, get a closer look at the decaying but modern classic looking building and saw what shocked to be a sign in the dark glass window that said, Paul's Diner, 24 hour service. I was shocked at what I was seeing. There was no diner named Paul's in town. Hell, this town never even had a diner to begin with, let alone one that sat on the side of the old country road surrounded by woods on each side. And I stepped out of my car, approaching the diner when I noticed I was the only car in that poorly lit parking lot. The door of the diner swung open as I approached the front door, and an older lady, I'd say mid to late fifties, said, Hello darling, welcome to Paul's, come on in. I stepped back a few feet, taken clearly by surprise at the situation on hand. Was this lady watching me? I looked back up at her and spoke with a shaky voice. Hello, I don't really have the time to come in, just kind of curious how long you guys have been here. She looked at me and opened her mouth to reply with the sound of glass breaking in the back of the diner caused her to spin around over her heels. Uh, damn it, Charlie. We stopped breaking them dishes. She yelled out more flustered than she was when she opened the door to greet me. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. We've been here about 50 years, I want to say, give or take. 50 years, I thought to myself. No way. Are you sure? I would have noticed this place before. I drive this route almost every night. Are you okay, sugar? She said, looking at me with a concerned look, now washing over her face. You look a little pale. Why don't you come on in and have a nice warm cup of coffee? How do you take it? Sugar or no sugar? She said, looking down at me with a notepad in her hand. Ah, uh, black, please. I replied, rubbing my eyes and yawning. There, alone in some diner I've never seen before on some old country road in a small town east of no man's land, I sat thinking to myself, could I really be that tired I had just never noticed this place before? How could I have missed it? This place is ancient looking. There has to be some kind of explanation. Diners just don't appear out of nowhere. Maybe I'm in another town that's... Maybe I took a wrong turn. I continued to think to myself. The waitress returned with my coffee, and I decided to ask her, What town is this? Her answer shocked me to the core when she named my town as the town we were in. I grabbed my coffee with trembling hands and forced a sip as the waitress continued to ask me if I was okay. Quite frankly, I did not even begin to know the answer to that question. I forced a nod, and she walked away, leaving me alone to dwell in my thoughts once again. I took a glance down at my phone while taking sips of coffee and realized no service was detected on my phone. How could this be, I thought to myself. I always get service on this road. I got up and walked over to the hostess stand where the waitress was from earlier. Uh, excuse me, by chance do you have a phone I could use? I have to call my brother and my phone seems to not be working. She looked up from the piles of paper she had in front of her and smiled. Oh, of course, follow me. I followed her into this even more poorly lit area of the diner where on the wall sat one of those phones you would see in a 50s retro looking diner. You know the ones your grandparents would have had back in their day. I picked up the phone from the receiver and dialed my brother's number. We're sorry. The number you have dialed cannot be reached at this time or is no longer in service. Please check the number and dial again. My face turned even paler as I heard these words. How can it not be in service? I was just talking to him like, 20 minutes ago. I placed the phone back on its receiver and thanked the waitress as I walked back towards the lobby. I walked back over to where I left my coffee and placed a five down on the table telling the waitress to keep the rest for the tip. She thanked me and I headed to the door only to realize something was really wrong other than the fact of a mysterious retro diner appearing overnight of course. There, outside in the night about 20 meters from the front door of the diner, set a full parking lot. I turned back to look at the diner which was now full of people who were dressed in 50s clothing and singing 50s music that was playing on the jukebox. What the hell? I said out loud, now seeing that every car outside other than mine was a 50s style vehicle. My head started to spin as I lost my footing, falling into the floor almost head first, the waitress running over to catch my fall. Is everything okay sweetheart? She said looking on with a look of concern washed over her face. I went to look up and respond to her when I screamed instead there holding me was a burnt corpse. 
I pushed her away, screaming, and brushing myself off as I entered the parking lot, taking one look back. I saw it. A diner full of corpses. They all were just lining the diner seats as if they were always there, but they weren't. I know they weren't. When I returned to the parking lot, I noticed I was the only car out there again. Even stranger was the fact that time itself seemed to have stopped, as when I looked down at my phone, I was in utter shock to see the time was 3.01 a.m. Only one minute had passed since I stepped inside that diner. I got in my car and floored it out of that parking lot, not taking one look in my mirror as my headlights passed the sign of my hometown. When I got home, I told my wife the story and of course she didn't believe me. Who would? I was driving home and got sent back to the 1950s. Yeah, okay, get real. I finished that night by searching for Paul's 24-hour diner after literally hours of nothing. I found a post with one article stating, If you see a diner on Old Country Road 9, do not stop. I thought this was weird, and by clicking on it, more and more people reported this happening to them. Another link on the dreadfully long forum page brought me to the town's historical site where I read a newspaper article dated June 10th, 1955. Local fire and rescue responded to a three-alarm fire along Country Road 9 at Paul's Diner and rest stop earlier today. All people were confirmed dead on the inside according to the fire chief. The fire started in the kitchen when 22-year-old Charlie Banks left the grill on and it shorted out. I was stunned at what I was reading. 1955. How the hell? And decided to upload my experience to that very forum all of them did. I stopped taking that road soon after this and I have not had an encounter with a ghost diner since. So, for the first time in a long time, the other day, me and my wife decided to drive through Old Country Road 9 to get to the next town over. Now, as many of you know, I have stayed clear to this road for the better half of 14 years and, honestly, for good reason. However, on this particular night, we had to get to the next town over to see her parents for the new year. Usually I would take the highway, but on this particular night, the highway was closed due to a car pileup. Old Country Road 9 was a straight shot right through the next town where I had to go and honestly, it really did shave off an hour of the drive. I took one look at my wife who was now starting to slump over in the passenger seat. Honey, uh, you good? I said to her, keeping one eye on the road and one eye on her. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just tired. She replied, yawning. Well, we're almost there, turning on to Country 9 now. I said back to her. I must have some sort of nervousness in my voice when saying that because she shot up from her seat now, sitting right up to my face saying, Are you going to be okay? I shot her a look, but before I could respond, a thick fog the size of a baseball field surrounded the car. James? She said, yelling back to me. What's going on? I tightened my grip on the steering wheel and did not even reply to her, my gaze 100% stuck on the road ahead. And then, just as it appeared, it disappeared, retracting off into the woods that surrounded the road. Okay, I think before I could finish that sentence, my wife cut me off saying, A diner out here? I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could, my car coming to a screeching halt, my gaze now meeting hers. There on the side of the road as if it had never left, sat the now faded neon sign illuminating the night with the words, Paul's Diner, 24 hour service. My jaw practically dropped as I saw this. I stay here, I said to my wife. I approached the diner and looked inside through the dark glass windows. The diner that once held such life was now empty and covered with trash. I looked around the property some more, setting my gaze upon the front door of the diner expecting to see Sue run out any minute. But she didn't. Sue was the name of the waitress that greeted me all those years ago, but instead of her greeting me this time, an older man did. Can I help you? A raspy voice said from behind the building. Uh, no, I don't think so. Just, uh, where's Sue? He looked at me for a moment and paused, then spoke. Sue? Son, there's nobody here by that name. I'm Steve, the caretaker of this rundown place. My face dropped as he said this. Caretaker? Yes, uh, we're going to be reopening this place soon. I looked at him again and at this point, my wife was now out of the car as well and said, Babe, uh, who are you talking to? I looked back at the old man as if to say to him I'm talking to him, but he was gone. I backed away slowly, all the way to my car, not letting that building leave my gaze. And I looked down to get in my car and back up at the diner, but it was gone. The diner was just simply gone. I told my wife we had to get out of here, and she agreed. We sped down the old road, not talking about what just happened. The rest of the ride was quiet, and we made it to her parents okay and on time. However, I did do some research yet again when we arrived and 
This time, to my shock, there was a new article to read on the incident, and it was one I did not see before. It said at the bottom of the fire report that I read last time, and it said in a little sub-article section that was barely noticeable. It read, Tragedy strikes local caretaker when trying to reopen old diner. Police and fire responded to a report of a man trapped earlier today, and when they arrived on scene, it was already too late. The man identified as 44-year-old Steve Moore was crushed to death under three tons of concrete in the old Paul's Diner and rest stop on Country Road 9. I turned pale and just dropped my phone, letting it hit the carpet below. My wife ran over to see if I was okay and I just simply nodded. The night ended normally and as I sit here submitting this on the same forum that all of you did all those years ago, I can't help but feel like this is just the beginning. 